All right, folks, this is the last portion of the edit. So we've done a little bit on special effects. We've talked about cropping and telling the narrative. We focused on atmospheric perspective. We've worked on light. So this one here now, I'm gonna work on a little bit of color grading and a little bit of light. So all we're gonna do now in my final step in this process, and again, I'm trying to keep this thing to an hour so we could go all the way to Wonderland, but I wanna avoid that because I wanna keep it short. All right, I'm just gonna come up and I'm gonna first start in with some of my light here. I'm gonna go to live layer. I'm gonna go to a lighting layer. I'm gonna change that over to a point light. I'm gonna bring it up over here and I'm gonna bring it right to about there. And then I want it to kind of flow up. So where did I put that lighting layer? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move it up above the flare, let's say. Actually, let's move it below the flare. And I'm gonna change the specular color to somewhere in the orange realm. Now, this is totally up to whatever you decide to do. I like it because it gives us a little bit of contrast between this area and the blue. If we look at the color wheel, notice how we've got kind of this teal area here and we've got the orange area here. I like to use light that gives me a certain amount of contrast. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna bring it inside of the bear. So now the bear is going to have this light as well. And I'm gonna shift that light. Oops. Let's go ahead and move that lighting layer, shall we? Okay. Let's go ahead and go double click here. There we go, move it there. I've kinda of got a little bit uh, turned around there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the type of light. I'm gonna make this a spotlight and I'm gonna push it and I'm gonna move it. And that's gonna give me my reflected light on the bear. So that's gonna work out real nice here for that. Okay, I wanna just do a little bit. I don't wanna do too much. So let's go ahead and bring that over. All right, just like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now notice how she's gonna have to stand out a little bit more. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come over to the woman here that I had and we're gonna go to foreground. We're gonna find the woman that we had here. And there she is. And we're gonna come up with the curves adjustment and I'm gonna crank down the blacks a little bit in her there. And I'm gonna crank up the whites a little bit here. That'll work. All right. So that's actually pretty cool. I think we've got some really good contrast there. I'm happy with that. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to unify the area here now with a certain amount of light. Now, the last thing that I will probably do is I'm going to try this. This might work. This might not. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to go I'm over here and I'm going to create. Let's go here to layer. Filter layer. Actually, we're just going to make it super easy. I'm just going to go ahead and create one of these. Plop. I put this up above everything, above the curve and all. Okay. And now I'm going to come up and we're going to grab a little bit of that light there. All right. Now, what are we going to do with this, right? Because you're going, Jeremy, this looks like hot trash, right? No problem. Here's what we're going to do. We're gonna find just that right look. I think that overlay is good. Now I'm gonna create a mask layer. And let's go ahead and fill this with straight up black. Now, why am I doing this? There should be a little bit of reflected light here that I want to bring in to make it look like she's not just sitting up there on an island. So now I come up to my brush and I'm just gonna use a soft brush here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. I'm gonna keep my flow down to maybe 10%, 15% of work. And now I come over with the color and I make it white. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. I'm actually quite happy with that. All right, good deal. I'm happy with that. All right, now my color grading process. There's no perfect answer. 
I use a combination of curves, I use a combination of selective color, and then I'll probably unify it with the texture and a gradient map. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you kind of how all of this works. Now, color grading is one of the last things that I do. I do it after I've got my lights figured out, so I kind of make sure that everything is unified. And let's go ahead and start with curves. So I'm gonna come up here, and the first thing that I do is I push my darks a little, push my whites a little, there we go. And now I want to try to make this a little less red. So let's try to bring down some of those reds there. A Little bit of that there, that looks pretty good. Now when it comes to the greens, I wanna turn down my greens a little bit. Let's go ahead and try to turn down some of those greens there. All right, now we turn up the green. That gives us a completely different look. I want to go a little bit down. All right, so I think that I'm pretty happy there. Let's try to turn down some of the greens and the darks too. All right, you see how I turn down the greens and the darks? I get to that nice magenta-ish purplish. I think that that's pretty cool because now I'm bringing her out front and center and I'm differentiating from the bear a little bit. So the curves adjustment is good. Let's come up now and do a selective color adjustment. Now, when it comes to selective color, this allows you to take different colors and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crank up a little bit of the magentas in my image. Ooh, I might actually turn them down a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Turn up a little bit like that. You see how this is actually adding a lot more contrast? And then let's darken this image just ever so slightly. Maybe even not even turn the slider a lot in my neutrals. All right, now I always tend to work with my blacks and I'll try to turn my blacks down a little bit to get a more muted type of look. So that works for me, I kind of like that. I'm gonna try my blacks to add in a little bit more magenta. And let's see in the blacks if I can get a little bit more yellow. I like the selective color tab, I use it a lot and I really like the look that it gives. All right, now, so we hit the Black and white, no. Brightness contrast, no. We've already hit the curves adjustment. Let's go ahead and grab a gradient map. Now, the student had already gradient mapped it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do one that I think kind of works. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unify it now. Now that I know everything has the right same color, which they did a great job on. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm going to shoot for an orangish. So I'm going to kind of do something a little bit like this. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, what is, where is he going with this? It was blue. Now we're going into some purples. Let's play the blend mode game. All right. Let's see what gives us what. I actually like the soft light. I'm going to try this. And when you use gradient maps... Turn them down a little bit, right? Turn it down a little bit and see what you can get. All right, now maybe soft light's the thing that works out. Maybe that's the thing that doesn't work out. I actually, ooh, I like average. All right, cool. I actually like that. Now, the next thing that I do, I always tend to come up with a unified texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and place. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab an image that I got. Again, you could take textures from anywhere texture files, and this is cement. All right, that is cement board there. And you're going, what is he doing with cement board? I'm gonna show you. We're gonna go to overlay. I'm gonna crank that down a little bit. And that's just gonna give us a nice texture to work with. Now, if it's a little bit light, let's say, you can always go a little bit further. Maybe the vivid light gives me something more but I think the vivid light destroys some of the fog. So I'm not a big fan of that. Let's try average and let's kick it up a notch. Okay. Now, if you're ever wondering if it destroys the image, turn it off, turn it on. And I like to use textures to finish off my image because if I have multiple files from multiple areas and they all look a little bit strange, the texture kind of unifies it all. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with an overlay. 
I really like that. And I'm going to crank it up a little bit. Okay, just a hair. All right, now, the final thing that I will probably do with her here, I want to take her a little bit, and I want to do two things to this bear. Now that I've gotten a chance to take a look at the bear, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank up the contrast on the bear. Ooh. And notice how you're going to have to make some subtle tweak adjustments. Yep, okay, I'm happy with that. And let's go back to her here. And now you're gonna, it's gonna go through, and this is why it's so important to work non-destructively, because you're gonna wanna go through and make the adjustments that you need to make to make sure that she looks right, okay? So I could keep tweaking with this a little bit here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and call it good, but let's take a look at where we started and where we finished. Beginning, end. Beginning, end. Notice the shadow's right. Notice the flares a little bit. All right, so while this wasn't a technical lesson on how to do a composite from the Affinity Photo tool standpoint, this was a best theory in terms of composites to help you with your perspective, your atmospheric perspective, your atmospheric moods, your color grading, working with special effects, and making your images come to life. Hope you learned a little bit. Join us for others at Seven Season Studios. And on behalf of Jeremy Hazel and Seven Season Studios, thank you so much for attending this master's class on a student composite. If you would like to submit your own composite for me to work on to do another class, simply send it over to support at seventhseasonstudios.com. The link is going to be down below. And I'd like to do three or four here this month to help us out as we're going to quarantine there. So keep creating and we'll see you in the next one. All right, folks, hope you learned a little bit about compositing. This was a fun five lesson type of class in terms of the fundamentals of compositing. If you want to learn more about compositing, we have an A to Z course in Affinity Photo right here. And we've got the link down below for a special price for being a finisher of this course. In addition, as promised at the beginning, we went through and we also pulled in the complete guide to Affinity Photo to help you on your way full of 10 plus hours of premium content on the how. So never stop learning, keep those coming. And again, if you want me to edit your composite, send it to submission at sevenseasonstudios.com. And I'm gonna do at least four more of these. So I look forward to seeing your composite in the inbox. All right, have a good one.